Hey, and we're back with another episode of Before You Buy, that show where we give you some straight up gameplay and some first impressions of the latest games releasing. And today we're talking about The Witcher 3 Next Gen. And yes, of course, this is technically a free upgrade. You don't buy it. Uh, chances are you've already bought The Witcher 3 at some point. But the developers are providing this free next-gen patch upgrade that takes advantage of the stronger, newer hardware and adds some new fixes and features and, frankly, uh, a new excuse to talk about The Witcher is always good with us. Now, as you know, we really like The Witcher, although the base game released in 2015 and we actually weren't doing Before You Buy videos yet, believe it or not. So uh, we jumped in to check this out. It's just a really good reason to replay. Now PC, Xbox Series X and S, and PS5 get a nice free update. For PC, there's a few added features that definitely help visually, but I think for console players, there's a bigger jump, and that's what we had time to dive into today. I had a more recent save I had played a couple months back for a video uh, on Xbox Series X. I play on both platforms, but I thought this was a good point in the game, so that's the footage you see mostly here. I also have a little PS5 footage that I'll drop in and label as well, but predominantly I've been on Xbox Series X for this one. Now let's talk about what this brings. Obviously, the first thing and the biggest thing is the visuals. The game has a boost in resolution and frame rate options. Across both consoles now, you'll have access to a performance mode and a ray tracing mode, depending on your preference. Uh, performance mode is 60 FPS, which, at least from my experience on Xbox, is mostly 60, with occasional dips I noticed in busy, detailed city streets. But ray traced mode prioritizes fidelity and introduces some additional lighting and reflection tricks. Now. I always say this, so just for newcomers, we're not Digital Foundry, so uh, you know, a more technical analysis type thing we suggest our peers, but for us, uh, we just go with gut feeling on these videos, and to be honest, it looks good and pretty improved in both modes. Maybe not like an insane jump if you're looking at it through a compressed YouTube video or anything, but I will say, like, I can only imagine going from playing on base PS4 and then never touching the game again and then jumping to this current generation. There is definitely a benefit here. Uh, the Witcher 3 experience is the best it has ever been here. Lighting is less choppy looking and overall more realistic from like a tree branch shadow crossing a character's face to fires in dark interiors to even just the way some of the foliage on the ground is lit. The game's lighting and tweaks to lots of textures make quite a difference. Uh, CD Projekt Red has uh, done a mountain of little tweaks and additions here and there that add up. Uh, they add up way more if you're extremely familiar with the game. Uh, some stuff you might not be impressed by if you just played it and never thought about it again. But like if you've been all up in this game's guts, you'll appreciate the smaller differences. Uh, for me, hair and armor clipping is much better. Enemies and things have slightly better textures thanks to CD Projekt Red integrating some mods into this. Uh, the Witcher 3 HD rework mod brings high quality smooth texture meshes, improved level of detail, and better draw distances. You'll notice it big picture, really, like head to the top of a valley or say a mountain to overlook the city or like some more mountains and it just looks all more detailed and stronger overall. They're still popping as you go around, unfortunately. Uh, it's just really something with the game's age, I guess. But distances still manage to look better overall and you'll notice the textures uh, up close with certain cobblestone areas, say like in Novigrad, at, le at least I did. Vegetation is increased, grass is thicker, and uh, the skybox has been updated, I think with like a couple of more scenes. And uh, one I noticed is like where the sky is just really gray and dreary, but like different than you've seen it already in the game. And it, it's pretty awesome. But you'll really notice this stuff when you find some deep woods and just go for a stroll. I mean, the game feels much more dense here and the thick grass actually shows some cool details. It's nice. The Witcher 3 for me was always visually best out in the fields with the winds blowing and the sun setting and uh, that is still the case here. It's all just a step nicer now. A new dynamic toggle that allows the HUD stuff to only really show up during combat or pressing the Witcher sense button allows you to really soak it all in. I mean, of course you could always have turned it all off in the settings, but yeah, that leads to a bunch of the fun little additions included in this game. The biggest you may have noticed right away, which I should have acknowledged earlier, uh, it's the new camera angle. 
The Witcher 3's camera was typically pretty wide and floaty, but now the game defaults to this kind of closer, more intimate, off to the side angle that I typically really like in most games. It's, it's a very popular angle, but I'll be honest, I had a bit of a hard time getting used to it here. It's still dynamic, so it'll swing out a bit for combat and uh, for finishing moves and stuff, it'll turn, but I'm still not kind of sure if I prefer it over the original. It's weird, and I'm still playing with it. Like, I haven't made up my mind yet. Thankfully, like a lot of the updates they've done with this game, it's just an option, and you can actually tweak it how you want it. So right now, for me, settings-wise, I have the traditional wider camera for riding around on horseback because it felt too claustrophobic up close on the horse because, I mean, Roach still rides like a piece of crap. So a regular old Witcher camera on the horse, fun close-up new camera off the horse. It's great when you're walking around towns and stuff. Those options to customize it are really nice. They've done that even more with the movement now, where Geralt has three different movement speeds pushing the analog stick. And uh, they've also changed it so you can have click L3 to sprint. Uh, they've also given you another option to swap and cast signs without bringing up the radial menu, which is very nice. Even if uh, at this point I'm kind of stuck in my ways, it's like muscle memory. Also, the map is just a bit cleaned up now uh, with just some reasonable little choices in cleaning certain things up and pushing things to other filters that just really kind of made sense and reduced some clutter. Another thing I really love to see here uh, natively integrated is better fall damage. It used to annoy me so much because it was so finicky. Like I feel like as Geralt, I would step off of a front porch and get immediate fall damage. It was just so finicky and kind of unpredictable. And now there's a bit of a bigger distance before you take fall damage. It doesn't make the game easier or anything. It was just an annoying little thing from the game that they decided to tweak. And I'm appreciative, definitely. Also. Photo mode, baby, hell yeah. Uh, finally, a native photo mode is up in here and it's got a good amount of features and stuff to do with it, like poses and little tweaks. PC fans have had their ways with photo modes, but now console game photographers can get in on the action with The Witcher 3 here, and I expect good things from you guys. They've also added in some weapons and armor items modeled after The Witcher Netflix series, but I, I haven't gotten to see those yet, full disclosure. I was really just kind of taking this all in for a test spin, you know, doing a couple of different quests, but really just jumping around the world to different areas and soaking up the vibes again at different times of day. And I, I think it's a good time really to replay this game again. Obviously, it's not like a remake or anything, but it's a free improvement to a great game that you can already sink a bajillion hours into. So I think it's a pretty nice win-win. Feels like a little gift, and I wish more developers did it this way. It just kind of slightly amps up and makes an already existing product way more playable. And uh, holy shit, what a game to play. I mean, at this point, I feel like we've talked so much about The Witcher 3. You're probably tired of it. There's a lot of people out there that just think the game's overrated and that's fine, but I just always found this to be really good comfort food adventuring. Like some people love to dive into Skyrim and play hours and hours and hours of that. I'm an old school Elder Scrolls fan, mind you, that's fine. But The Witcher 3, something about the tone and atmosphere and the quality of all the quests and side quests just made it so fun to continuously jump into over and over again for a million hours. The personality of the characters, the vibe of this world, uh, the kind of grim stories and creatures it sets up isn't really like anything you've seen in a lot of other games. And I think for that, it's still really special today. I mean, it's CD Projekt Red's biggest game ever, and I'm glad to see now here in 2022 that it's gotten the royal treatment, so to speak. Again, in summation, like in my time playing it, it doesn't matter much because you can download the patch for free, but still, I haven't seen any red flags with this at all. I think all the improvements are good. Some you might not even notice, some you might, but if you're looking for a game to replay this holiday season, now you have more of a reason for it to be The Witcher 3, and if you've never played it before, then yeah, of course, this is definitely a good time, dude. I mean, what'd you expect me to say? Not to be like a fanboy or anything, but yeah, I mean, that's it. This is a before you buy. You know how this goes by now. I give you some pros, some cons, and some personal opinion, and now I wanna hear yours down in the comments. What do you think of The Witcher 3? Of course, let's go, <laughs> off to the races. But once this patch drops for everybody, I definitely wanna know your first impressions of it. Uh, what's the first thing you noticed? For me, I only pointed out in this video the things that I really found noticeable. You may have had something catch your eye that you think is worth highlighting, so definitely hit us up. Let us know in the comments. Let's talk anything The Witcher 3 at all. If you appreciated this video and just enjoyed seeing some gameplay to judge for yourself, clicking the like button is how you can really help us out. We'd very much appreciate that. But if you're new, consider subscribing, maybe hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But either way, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.